Solva is officially two weeks today, and thanks to you, we are being aired and shared. Tolani and I are actually so grateful for the feedbacks on social media. We are definitely pumped up to see where this goes. And what's down for today's podcast? I mean, today's episode on Solva Podcast. Bernard Kalu. And I'll just cut to the chase, okay? I hooked up with Bernard. We had a really cool conversation, you know, talking about photography, of course, street documentary, and these times in the pandemic, and how can we manage that? Oh, I'm sorry, by the way, if you're like me, you're probably like tired of hearing the word pandemic, COVID-19, you know, the illness. But hey, it's our duty to, you know, talk about these things um, because there are so many people with questions about how to cope you know, in these days. Um, so let's, yeah, let me let me just go on ahead and tell you a bit about Bernard Carlo in case you're wondering who's this guy and why are we bringing him up on episode two of Silver. All right, so I, I, I Googled his bio, okay? Don't judge me. And I'm just going to read it out loud to you. So Bernard Kalu is a documentary photographer based in Lagos, Nigeria. His work is inspired by a passion to explore life and humanity. Photography is drawing with light and he's adopted it as a tool to not only tell stories but preserve today for the future. Bernard began working in photography in 2014, exploring street documentary and creative twists to wedding photography with Oxano photography. He's a certified Canon master storyteller, seven Academy Foundry alumni, first runner-up in the 2017 Nat Geo Portfolio Review and has been on assignment with a number of organizations within and outside of Nigeria. To mention a few, The Lancet, Bloomberg, IFAD, NBNL, and so on. Also, Bernard is a very passionate tutor and mentor to a good number of upcoming visual storytellers. True that. He had his first exhibition early 2017 at the Revolving Art Gallery in Lagos, Nigeria. And more recently, he has begun focusing on raising awareness about environmental and social issues in his home country, Nigeria. Now, before we go on with our session with Bernard Carlo, um, just a follow-up to last episode on Sova Podcast. You know, I had mentioned... um, how I started my journey into professional photography. Um, I mentioned three elements that I was introduced to, and I don't know if you remember. But yeah, just in case you were wondering what those three elements were and are, they are, of course, those three things you often adjust on your camera. The aperture, the ISO, and of course, the speed in no particular order. And um, those three elements are probably like, the tripods, you know, the, the 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 tripod that holds the camera, the 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 foundation for creating images with your equipment, whichever one you are using, those three are essentials. It's possible, however, that you're probably not used to hearing about shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. Um, these are actually called the tripod. The, the triangle, the exposure triangle, rather, sorry. Yeah, they're called the exposure triangle. And, you know, they're, they're really just the basics of photography. You need to know them as you step into professional photography to, you know, kind of master your craft, know, know how to play with light and bring out the shades that you want, the colors that you want, the angles that you want, you know, in your image. Um, but that's enough about, about those three elements. You can read more about them. In fact, if you build your strengths on the basics of photography, you're likely to last a long time in the game because, you know, it just helps you I'll tell you the truth, it's helped me mostly. And then from there on, you can train your eye by learning from leading photographers, seeing how, you know, they they go about their composition, they go about subjects and storytelling, and merging all of that with the basics brings out the excellent photographer in you. Now, I hope that was helpful. Um, uh, I think you should just, you know, go straight into the conversation with Bernard. Um, By the way, guys, just a a bit of a notice. 
the conversation we're having was already juicy from the beginning. I couldn't help but insist that we start from the unofficial part of the conversation. This means that some part of the conversation was actually off record, but it was just too good to leave out. But don't worry, you will understand as you listen. So please pay attention and go ahead if you want to take notes. If you have questions, that's totally fine. You can share them on the comment section um, via the Sova Podcast YouTube channel. Um, here we go. Uh, after the shutter click, the sound you're going to be hearing will be Bernard and I. Mix your work solid is beyond the feedback you get now. Like just, just create work because if you keep thinking about... Um, Feedback comes in different phases. It comes in money, cash, mm-hmm. getting paid for your work. It comes uh, in Instagram, the likes and the comments. And uh, maybe for those that enter grants, whether you, you made a grant based on the work you submitted. They're nice if you get them, but don't don't get carried away by this immediate feedback. Because um, a lot of the works we call the works of the masters and all, Nobody clapped for them when they when they shot this. They were absolutely Nobody, unknown. Like I mean, the, no like, followers. There's a story I, I I stumbled upon was it last year last two years about um, I'm sure you have seen it like a some nanny mm-hmm. or nanny back in those days. She had a camera. She was always walking the streets taking selfies. Oh. Like you should, you should see that work online. It's amazing. Like. Nobody saw those pictures. I mean, she even died. Nobody even saw those pictures. It was later someone stumbled upon the, the files. And, and it was because it was selfies. It was easy to, like, they, they tracked out. And if it was just random street photos, they would just call it anonymous. But it was selfies. And, I mean, that work, if you know how much money, besides the money, but if you know how, like, you can, you can, like, the, value. the, de- the depth, the value of the work is, is, you can't deny it. It's undeniable. Oh, you wow. get. So, but imagine, like, she showed those the work in the time when I mean I love I mean you, you shoot pictures you don't even see the pictures until they go to one dark room and blah 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 blah. If imagine if she was was just dependent on the immediate transient gain at the time she I mean she won't she won't continue there won't be anything to celebrate today. So we should know that art even though or art should pay your bills yeah it will pay your bills eventually like you if you put in the work but. <laughs> Remember that you're creating work for the long run as well. For the long, you're playing the long ball. You're not just all about now, because if your focus is just on now, you will stop at some point because you will just want you ju- want to jump onto the next thing. Okay. So as much as you can, do um, I mean, have side businesses like be be prudent with your with your life, <laughs> like um, yeah, be prudent with your life. Have side businesses. Um, Learn, learn about business, get financial mentors and all. Mm. Like, I mean, at some point you get, you, you get paid good money, like invest in stuff. Mm. But they should try to separate the value of your work from money. If you don't, you, will, you would crash and burn at some point. Fast. Before you even yeah, you know, sure. get there. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's already a lot. I, I'm saving that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I'm definitely saving that. Yeah. Okay. Or maybe I just let people know, like, okay, this is the official beginning <laughs> of this. <laughs> this is the official beginning um, of this conversation. Um, so how long, by the way, I know, like, everyone must have asked you this, like, a thousand times. Well, how long How long have you been doing this photography? Uh, there's an official one and an unofficial one. <laughs> Tell me the unofficial <laughs> one, because that one makes me smile. Um, unofficial would be, um, I think, 2013. Oh, wow. So I, I got the point-and-shoot camera. I, I shared a picture on my personal Instagram Those page. Those very special guys. The point and shoot. They, yeah, are, they very, were they were very, always so oh precious, you know. <laughs> so funny thing, I got it from one of my my aunties. She's like she's been in the US for forever. Like amazing woman. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me call her name, Mrs. Comfort. <laughs> <laughs> amazing woman, like one of my big aunties. So she sent it to me then. It was like a beautiful gift. So I think I, I just finished school then. So I was still in Enugu for the while. So I was just playing around with the camera, like just taking random pictures and all. Um, but when I actually decided to officially do photography, I think it was somehow 2014, 2015. Mm-hmm. That was when, I mean, I had to, I got, I got a Nikon D7000. No, first I got another gift. I've been getting gifts as cameras. Amazing. 
I got my second camera was a gift too from my uncle, Mr. Noma, Dr. Noma, sorry. Yeah. He wasn't here that I called him Mr. Please scrap that. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Anoma Olu is <laughs> big on his name, please. <laughs> <laughs> so he gave me an Olympus um, DSLR camera, E410, a crazy camera. So I used that. I took a few pictures with that. That was the picture, the camera I officially started with. But well, that's the one that got stolen. No, 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 no. I've had, man, God has been good. I've had a lot of cameras. So see me. We envy we, you. We need to we need to look back and and count our blessings, man. <laughs> I'm telling you. Although I'm, I'm one of those too, like. I feel like some photographers will be listening right now and they'll be like, man, you guys are just so... How convenient, right? How convenient. <laughs> you just have people dashing your cameras, like, man. you know. But till date, I don't think I have bought one single camera with my money. No, no I'm about to buy. I mean, the one that goes... With my personal money, yeah. funds, like, Benita and Natchatam's money. Like, it's always been from... Um, has it ever been a gift yeah. or an essential to that my boss had to pay for yeah yeah or provide how cute so how I, cute I, I, I right? sound like the people like how convenient <laughs> how convenient <laughs> well so, yeah, yeah. so I, I, I got the um, e410 um i shot uh, for a bit with it then but i officially started photography like when i got that the 7000 mm. that was when i started shooting weddings mm. i had opened the oxano photography page mm. Rest in peace. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, we're so going to talk about that. Yeah. Because like Oxano was it was it was going somewhere. Yeah, it was. Yeah, we'll talk about How that. How did definitely. you feel about letting go of that name, that brand name that you carved out as a young man? Uh I, sincerely I didn't I didn't feel I didn't feel much, but Oh wow. Everybody connected to me felt something like, oh, there was uh, my fiance Jennifer. She was mm. like, oh, they, like she, she, I mean, she was, she was so attached. Um, yeah. I had friends like that were like, oh, come on, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? Just keep it open. But the truth is this, um, Oxano uh, for me was, was, was purely business. Mm-hmm. Even though, yeah, it was me creating work, it was me shooting the weddings, but it was a very, it was a business was a business decision, a business. The whole name, the whole concept around it was business. The whole idea was business. The whole idea was business. Which so, is good because yeah. you just talked about being prudent. Exactly, as a it was business. So when um, the idea of collaborating with Femi Awoboko, mm. my, my business partner, uh, when, when Ver, it came Vertela. Up, Ver, uh, like, Vertela is the name that came up. I'm like, what the. <laughs> I am Ben Teller, and these guys are gonna oh, come up. But then, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't click like that. It, it, didn't just, click, it, right? it just made sense. And then I'm like, well, Bernard is my guy. I'm sure he's not dissing me. <laughs> so when when the idea came out, I mean, Femi is a great guy. Femi has head for numbers. He's, yeah. He's, you be, told me Vertella means like a German a German thing for Dutch, story for Dutch? storyteller. Do, yeah. yeah, Dutch yeah. for storytelling. Yes. So he has head for business. I mean, he's, he's smart and. You know, as much as I would like to um, claim that I know business, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm not that good with business. You're not business savvy. Savvy. So it yeah. just made sense that oh, okay. Since Oxano was supposed to be like a wedding outfit, business wedding outfit, and it's not like and there's an option to collaborate with somebody that knows his numbers better and has a business head better than you do. It just um, made sense who that won't, oh, who won't uh, tell the client? Oh yeah, yeah just take hundred k away and pay me whatever you can. You, you I, I, I will vibe. help you yeah. shoot your wedding because yeah, so, I'm nice. So I can afford to be my artist self and yes. still do business how, how it should be done. Were so you really that bad though at handling business? I wasn't bad, but I, I I didn't I wasn't I didn't care much about it. Like hmm. how would I put it? It's um, it wasn't just your place of strength or something. Yes. So is so with business I. How would I put it now? I have this, this, um, I always say something, you know, Alpha and Omega. Mm-hmm. Alpha is beginning, Omega is end. So mm-hmm. I have a very serious Omega mindset that, that rolls me up from the process, from the beginning to, I just know that things will be all right. But mm. that's, that detail, like that detail from the Alpha to the middle to the Omega, I really don't care about it. So even, even though it always works for me, like I always get to the Omega spot, but which is the wedding, the shooting itself, or no, so not the shooting, like the everything being alright, getting the money, okay, like being okay, okay being yeah. able to afford, like, okay, my, my a good life and all, okay. But that that um, I I eventually realized that somebody has to like that process has to take place, like somebody has to do the alpha part, somebody has to do the 
meat part. So mm-hmm. since I couldn't do it, it was just wise for me to open up to collaboration Someone and somebody that who, could do it. And we'll still arrive at the Omega that I always know, always know. Good and, at, yeah. and your friend, um, he's also a photographer. Yeah, he's a photographer. He, he, his business was a caution pictures. Oh, so you, you both let go yeah, we of both your babies. Go. Yeah, it's oh, wow. so, so cute. <laughs> <laughs> amazing, amazing collaboration. Yeah, I'm but still, still I mean, that, that tells a lot. I mean, you, you ended up coming together and bringing out something even more unique, you know, yeah. really, really catchy name that I admire. Yeah, wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yeah, and I, but, but how's the business part going now? Now let's get let's get down to the gist of you know the times yeah. right. It's our duty to reflect on the times according to Nina Simone. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. But like, <laughs> Did you just say that. Okay, so, so um, uh, how's okay, that affecting? So how's this year, time? You know, the whole lockdown, everything. So I think we we started twenty eighteen officially. Then mm-hmm. um, twenty nineteen was our first year of business, and it was good. Like at the year end, we had like we did our numbers and. Th- it was it was it was okay. It was really nice. Mm-hmm. Then we're looking forward to like twenty twenty man. This is the year mm, to the year we will blow to 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 I mean to amplify the, amplify the efforts we put in I like last that year word. and get amplify. Uh, no, I like the word amplify. Yeah, you know, like amplified Bible. So <laughs> amplify the efforts we we put in and get like get something. Yeah, and we we're, we're on it. We, I mean, we've had like one or two meetings, and February came and. Life happened and in an amplified. Since the 7th of February, we just heard there was something called Corona. Like it looked like an amplified a ball disease. With rings and yeah. I'm wondering what's this? Yeah, and now so, you're dealing with that. Like I, yeah. I, I had my share of you know, should I call it halted appointments? You know, yeah, just yeah. like oh yeah, we're we're reconsidering that. Can we just hold on till the lockdown is over? I'm like no, I I, I can actually shoot. Don't worry, I'm, I'm safe. I can come and yeah. I can make yeah. it happen. But people, you know, of course, got the memo and they had to turn down. Um, so, good. what what's saving you right now? Um, I I can't wait for us to get to the part of a uh, street documentary, which yeah. is something I know that you're very big on. You've been mm-hmm. so consistent on it, and a lot of people want to know how you keep going. You know. Um, but before I even get there, like, what are the good decisions that you've made in the past yeah. that are actually saving you right now? What are those smart decisions that you've made in the past? Is it finances? Is it savings? You know, what did you do right? You know, how are you not begging for food right now as oh, a creative? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, hmm. it's a combination of um, a couple of things, but... The first one I always say is God because mm-hmm. I explained to you how I'm I'm Ill, I have this omega mindset where yeah. I really don't care for the details yeah. but I just know the destination, just know the destination I'm going to. You're fine. Yeah. So um, um, kudos to Jennifer. Mm-hmm. She she um, I think sometime last year or mm-hmm. or yeah she she kept emphasizing the need to save like to save to. And this, there's something about saving, especially with us, especially in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. Saving is, you know, Nigeria makes you think, not Nigeria, but the level um, I was at, or many of us, used, we, we, we are or something, mm-hmm. it makes us feel like we are not saving enough. But the problem is, as, is that we are not actually earning enough. Mm. So you need to earn enough to save. That's fair. So, so, so for the longest time, when she, when she met, talks about saving, I'm always like, I mean, I, w- I, l- I, l- I would love to save, but... I w- would I? <laughs> I need to be alive to save. Like the monies that are coming in now is just to run like the daily um, affairs of my of my life on of our life. But Someone calls that feeding from hand to mouth, but exactly. like exactly so an you, upgraded version, you know. Exactly. So yeah. saving is nice. The idea of it is nice, but I mean, you need to have to save. Mm-hmm. So the idea is for us to literally enlarge our hearts to get more, mm-hmm. and eventually, like much later in the year, like. Last year, I, yeah, much later. Was it last year? Last year, mid last year, late last year. I got I got a couple of gigs. Like we had Vetella, I had personal um, documentary assignments and all, and there was money to save. Good. Yeah, so that's Good. it. So, but what happened is, and like, you saved, and right? I saved, yeah, okay. definitely. So okay. ideas came together. The fact that oh, she kept bringing oh, save, 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 and the fact that oh, I said money has to come to to be saved, like so. We like got to that point where things just worked out. So, I so free tips, everyone listening. Listen to a good 
is it called fiance or fiance? Fiance. Fiance. Okay. I, I just learned it. Let me even say it for for people listening. <laughs> learn free English. <laughs> Both, you know, it's spelled differently, but it's, they are all pronounced the same way. Fiance, fiance. Oh wow! Man, I was blown away. I have life. been killing myself. You'll just be saying hearing people F- fiance, 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 fiance. It's fiance, my people. <laughs> English language, free tip, enjoy. So enjoy podcast. <laughs> 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 yeah okay so that's by the way yeah. apart from you know having uh making the right choice of people you know in your life who just tell true, you true. as a friend like true. hey just do this you know save or yeah, yeah, so that's, invest your money you know that's one that's one yes yeah i just want to emphasize the the concept of relationships okay like beyond just um intimate ones like having a fiance yeah but relationships are i think relationships relationships are more solid than money because um, everybody has like gold in them, and it's just like having a reservoir of of, of wealth in people. Mm-hmm. So um, there's there's a, there's there's a part of um, like savings and mm-hmm. like advice and how I got to save. There's also the the idea of um, of um, people. So knowing Femi, for instance, um, there's, there's Lumi Morgan, Tom Morgan, mm-hmm. like having those people, especially, okay, especially during these times, I've had times when, um, I, like, um, Tom just calls me up, hey, before the whole lockdown, hey, what's up, how you doing? I mm-hmm. go there, hang out, like, ha- we have dinner together. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, They are it's, so cool, both of them. Um, amazing people. I so, love them. So, <laughs> like, it's still one of the things that, that get to keep me going, like, that whole yeah. relationship, having people to um, talk with, having people that you can communicate with that you guys can communicate in the same frequency. So mm-hmm. there's there's no um there's no awkward, you know, yeah, difficulty. No, yeah, you don't in feel like you're not making sense. Yes, yes, yes. But it's very important having people you can you can communicate with, like you can, you can share with because like Tolani always says about there's something I heard her say the last time where she was talking on um I think it was on Gaz Madu's um Zoom call. Okay. Where she said um that she doesn't like being the smartest person in the room. Like mm-hmm. when she feels like she's the smartest, she just zaps. And it makes sense because you don't want to keep communicating and feel like, oh, you pe- people are always having to catch up to what you're saying. Mm-hmm. So it's good for a change that you're communicating and people just get you. And if anything, they even like take it higher for you. So yeah. yeah so it's one of the things that. So relationships. One of the decisions. Yeah. That are helping you right now. Yeah, true. Yeah, because that's something. Why I asked that is because it's something I've come to learn. I think since like last year, I've had like a really difficult transition process from working in government and yeah. all of that to um, doing my freelancing via my business and so on and so forth. So the right decisions I've made in the past, like mm-hmm. the right people, the right partner, you know, has helped me from time to time. You know, so that's why I asked that. Yeah. So now let's get to the juicy part. Not like what we've been saying has <laughs> not been juicy, but you know, you yeah, you are a guy for the streets. You know, you. yeah, you are a guy when it comes to street documentary. At least as far as Nigeria is concerned right now, we really, really, really applaud your consistency, guys. Let's just give it up. Let's just give it up for. Benny. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't, in case you guys yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. You. He, he legit took a bow. Um. So. How has it changed for you, you know, um, from going out? I don't know, but you put out content like almost every day. I feel like you actually do a lot of street documentary. Like probably, I don't know, how often do you go out usually before now? Um, maybe every day. Every day. Or once in two days, yeah. Okay, that's still, that's still a lot. <laughs> and and now, what's, what's, what's it like now? Um, the, the, it's, it's, Almost the same, but the only difference now is um, I, 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 especially since this whole the whole lockdown and post lockdown, I've not gone beyond my my uh, immediate environment. My immediate environment. So oh. I've just been around Ogudu here, like the estate and just the environment. That's just the only difference. But I always try to go out because because there's something like there's something I always try to point out like. The, the the very um, excuse me the very concept of street photography or the idea of street photography for me wasn't the name street photography mm. it was it was something I it was it was therapy that became street photography like it was mm. something that I started doing because um, I I felt a connection with it and it was it was with time I eventually unveiled what the connection was I mean I and I realized oh maybe okay I mean I was born 
I, w- I always say I was born in Oshodi, like I grew up in Egbeda. So I was really like, there's this attachment or there's this connection I have to this, to the people and to the streets that, that a lot of people don't understand because maybe because they just see one light skin guy, they're like, ah, this one is just a jebo or anything, <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah. But the, the whole concept of going out to street in the street, it's, it's me um, um, reveling in that connection I have and just just this it's just something i can't it's hard to put to words but it's 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 connected to therapy and the connection i have with it beyond street photography it's just when people see the pictures and they're like oh they now give it a name now call it oh this is actually street photography candid but, candid candid photography but yeah. the connection for me is is beyond it's it's not i, I don't go out to shoot because I'm, I'm trying to do street photography mm. I go, I go out to shoot because it's something i'm connected I, i'm connected with it's my like it's my um not to, I'm trying not to sound them very um, mastai, but it's my, <laughs> it's like, it's my, it's like, it's my passport to the world. Like it's, like it's a, it's like my connection. It's my way to connect with the world. Like that, that whole camera in the street. And it's because I love to, I mean, meet people and talk with people, especially. And it people, became like a. Yeah, so it became it, it like way, yeah. a thing. Yeah, it became like, like a door. Yeah, yeah, so now things are not really different. It's still me. I mean, I didn't change. Whether mm-hmm. whether this COVID or not, I'm still Bernard Carlo. So mm-hmm. I was still, I still need that connection. I still love to have that connection. Oh, so, well, everyone yeah. has masks on now. M- masks. Yeah. Oh. So that's uh, yeah. yeah. With with how things change, yeah, that ma- that mask thing is actually a real thing. Like, yeah. Now you just have to take like half their faces. You don't know. You don't know where in heart self. But it's interesting because it's still like it's still in my own opinion. I think it's it's um, it's beautiful. I mean, it's life. It's true it's and it's life. reality. It's re- yeah. It's like I mean, it's fact. So yeah. it's good. I, I don't. I don't. I don't feel like oh thing because remember I said it's a connection thing. So if it was. If I was if I was more concerned about the pictures, that's where I'll start getting worried that oh I'm not getting their faces or they are wearing masks. But that's that's not my business. I mean it's I'm just taking life as it unfolds. So it's what what is obtainable now. So I'll just shoot it. I don't bother whether oh people have masks or not. Where do these pictures go? All these pictures you're taking on the street. Yeah. I'm speaking for those who have been following you and they must have come to I don't know, but maybe in in some part or in some way they are imagining that you're making a ton of money, you know, getting grants and traveling around. Hallelujah. (laughs) (laughs) Getting grants and traveling around Nigeria and the world, you know, just documenting because they are like big, um, what do you call them, Uh, press houses, you know, media Mm -hmm. houses that are waiting to just buy your pictures. Where did these pictures go? Uh, do Do you... subscribe to stock photography are you saving them for some better time in the future is it just for the ig mado fire fire you are good you are dope i love you i'll die for you this <laughs> photographer you know is it just for the ig fan um or fans um so yeah. um that's a very interesting question <laughs> where do the pictures go they go to my hard drive first, first of all, of all. <laughs> first off. First off. <laughs> but the truth is this you know i mentioned i mean the primary gain for me is actually taking these pictures okay so already i'm i'm good like i'm already good with the interaction with the connection i i, I get taking mm. the pictures mm-hmm. but um where do the pictures go like what happens afterwards mm-hmm. okay there are different things that happen so street photography has helped my journey as a documentary photographer oh. like it has made me um it has made me understand the arts more like understand photography more in so, which way hmm? in which way in the fact in the way that oh every time i get the opportunity to shoot like i mean you get better by by every, by doing stuff so because again i get and to again. shoot often my i've developed my my vision my eye to a level where when i have when i have to do professional work like have to do like maybe you have to shoot weddings or have to go on assignment for for a company or for mm-hmm. an organization I know what to shoot. Like my pictures, I'm not trying to figure out stuff because I already know how to. I know the technical part. So that's one of the ways consistently doing street photography has helped me. Then there's the part where I, I sometimes I get to sell pictures. Oh, okay. um, people reach out to me to buy images for for magazines, for calendar, for 
their app or something they're doing. So, but that wasn't your intention. That wasn't my. T- that's it. So that wasn't my intention. But mm. it's just um, it's a byproduct of thank of you. that. That's a word. So there's that. So I've I've been opportunity to sell pictures and all. Then this the part where um, street photography, like the pictures, they've made me and uh, connected me to um, to people, like um, to to street photographers all around the world. Okay. So this it's it's been like a, a, a community uh, or something. Yeah, so it's been like a what's it called? Like a pass to a bigger a bigger world, to a bigger community. So I've 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 been opportunity to be be in communities where there are other street photographers and get to le- hear their own story. This, this, okay, me when I talk about mine, I'm always like, oh, what pushed me to do street photography was was personal, was more uh, self therapy and all. But other people just hear theirs is oh, I just love colors and I just mm. needed to like you hear different stories and it just makes sense. So how do you how do you intentionally? Because I don't think it's everyone, for someone like me, I can start with me. The strength I put into documentary photography, when I go into weddings, except if, I don't don't think I've experienced it personally. Maybe my team, they have. But me personally, taking pictures at a wedding um, event or ceremony is just crazy. Because I could, I always say this, like, I could be focusing on the randomest thing yeah. while the couples are doing their dance and it's like a really important moment and probably just capturing the gifts and <laughs> one light shining on a wall you know and it's so random because i'm more about the abstract yeah you know i like after i like the colors and weddings are so busy so what about street photographers or uh, documentary photographers who don't see themselves partnering with someone to do weddings to get you know that consistent yeah. saturday you know, um, gig, um, or weekend so, gig. So, so yeah. How do you monetize? Okay, so, Have you found out maybe from your community of, yeah. of photographers? So it's something that I, it's something I'm even trying to, I, I and, um, Christopher honor, oh, you know, yes, him, something yeah, we're guy. working on. We're trying to, um, create a, a purely street photography community, um, community, community, like a group. Okay. Um, like, um, what do you call it? What do you call um, like a collective okay. purely for street photography, but from Lagos, Nigeria, and okay. it, there are other street photography uh, communities globally. You have um, the Ross Street, you have um, so many of them, like Little Street, have like mm-hmm. and streets, even the Street Photography International. Mm-hmm. So we're trying to create something here local, and the goal is this. There's several ways you can make money from street photography, but it's not something we started pl- exploring here in Nigeria or as Africans or as mm-hmm. Nigerians. So there's the part where you can you can we can organize exhibitions like maybe once every quarter, where we just uh, collaborate with maybe space and all get amazing pictures of Lagos, print it, um, what's it called, publicize and publicize so so people will come and buy. Then mm-hmm. the the creators, the artists, they they'll, they'll get some money. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a power you we can make books mm-hmm. like personally that's one of the things that I'm, yeah, books, uh, that's books one of, be nice yeah that's 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 like my that's like that's like one of my that was one of my plans for the year for this 2020 i was supposed to release my first official book mm, and big one. it's still in the works yeah so you can you can create books and sell mm-hmm. books mm-hmm. um and books and the, the 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 power of books is it's it's a reoccurring um, what's it called reoccurring income like you don't just uh, exhibition you sell the pictures once mm-hmm. even though your pe- the people you sold to can sell it uh, like depending on how your yeah. art appreciates but for books books is people will always buy books and it's something and, you, and if you, a collection should finish you can print more exactly and mm. you, you can even decide depend, depends on how you want to do it you, want, you, you could do it like a limited edition where you print in um, editions or you could do it that you want to put it online people should buy it online so like it's it's limitless then you can um then we're, we're thinking of collaborating um with um like organizations like banks, okay, banks and um, other organizations to pitch to them that oh, instead of you guys buying buying going online to print stuff or buying art, or you, we can actually have like an understanding where you can buy local art, like buy pictures from Lagos and adorn your offices. 
so that yeah, way pictures of Lagos. Pictures of Lagos. So that way there's there's money for the I mean the money is circulating around, there's money for the artists and you guys are like the money's coming back in. So there are there are many ways, but I feel like the the reason why um why it's like a body in my heart, why I'm thinking, oh I and Chris should start it is because um we, we as single as individuals can decide to oh pursue this thing and just be making the money for ourselves or try try and do this thing. But I feel like um it's something that will be stronger if it happens as a community that we we just we we grow the indo- the industry we grow this part of the industry once instead of um people just yes. sp- sporadically doing stuff and it doesn't make it sense that way yeah that's nice so what's the name of the collective you've come up with so that's the thing with the name the, the is, name part the name is in art okay it isn't but, out yet, but, but but soon will come out okay but how can people find like is there an IG handle, or if people should just follow you, they'll get the memo? Yeah, if they, yeah they should just follow me. Follow Do you post Chris. it on your feed or just your stories? I'll, it will be a full post. <laughs> no, we're, not, we're not doing this after it because okay. it's something that. It's, it's a question I've been asked a lot of the times like, oh, how do we make money from this? How do. We? And because, maybe because of how street photography started for me, I tend to ignore the money part a lot because yes. I always feel like. I mean, yes. you guys, are you guys not enough just shooting these pictures? I mean, I'm already okay shooting these pictures. They will punch you. They will punch you, I already feel better. Already, it's already therapy for me. Why are you guys stopping me about money? But, I mean, now I understand um, I understand the the money part. And mm-hmm. it's something that I feel like I would do. I am yeah. Chris will make happen. Thank you. Do. Please Thank you do. Too. Because I bet that you've inspired some people to pick up their cameras and start shooting on the street. Yeah. You'll be surprised the numbers, actually. Um, the first time I, I saw your page, I think I was in Port Harcourt, and I was still very new into the world of um, photography. I was like, oh, who's this guy? You know, it's it was very, very encouraging. And I can just imagine people who, I, I'm sure you've met a couple yourself, you know, mm-hmm. um, in your past hangouts. Like someone say, oh, yeah, I, I saw your page, and I, I thought, oh, I have an eye for this thing, and I actually like to do it, and so I'm yeah. going to do it. So now you are responsible for some people that... <laughs> yeah, so know, yeah, I know. That you inspire um, in some way, but yes, please do that. Um, so for those listening, it is at K A B E N N Y. That doesn't sound like that's kids. That poor is kids. G O. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so it's K A B E N N Y. An underscore. <laughs> oh, an underscore. Yeah. Oh, okay. So. At K A B E N N Y and underscore <laughs> at Kabeni underscore. So uh, check that out. Check his page out. Um, if you're just listening, you're just finding out who this guy is for the yeah. first time. Um, yeah, I'm not going to start like saying his whole history. Just please uh. find out yourself. Thank <laughs> you. Um, so Bernard, is there anything you think uh, or you've been itching to let like photographers know? Is there some message some shout outs not really a shout out don't mm. yeah don't don't get me wrong but is there something you're really um yeah you're really about sharing right now to uh, photographers just come out with it <laughs> wow all, are you choking are you about to cry no, first of all i just i'll just like to say thank you to to everyone that has um that has been there or that have been there for um Everyone that have been there for, for the industry, for people in the community. I mean, um, we have different generations. Like our generation is different from those ahead of us or those that come in after us. Mm-hmm. But um, for my for my generation, uh, I might not be able to mention some names. Like I might not be like you know what we're saying before we said. <laughs> <laughs> I might not know um, a lot of these people personally, but. The ones I know, I know, I know Andre Sebor, I mm. know, um, I know Tom Stata, mm. I know Alabi Sama. Mm-hmm. I mean, these three people, especially as regards documentary photography, they've they've been there. Like they've, especially Andrew. They are also amazing, so approachable, always like, ready to yeah, help. Yeah, so I, I feel I feel like they've they've really um, they've they've really helped. Especially, mm. I'm talking for myself. They've helped mm-hmm. me personally, and. Um, and I, I just want to thank them, and I want to say thank you to to every other person, like every everybody that's helping in the field, whether it's portraits and uh, whether it's portrait, whether it's weddings, whether it's. I just want to say thank you. Keep um, keep lifting the body up. Keep lifting the whole body up because the mm-hmm. truth is this: 
greed gr- greed is um greed, greed is human <laughs> but mm-hmm. i'm not would like to admit it greed is a human trait like everybody has the the um everybody has that um tendency to be greedy I mean, it just starts from a little, oh, I'm, being, I'm just taking care of myself. I'm just being taken care of myself before, you know, it becomes greed. There's a very thin line between, oh, I'm taking care of myself and greed. <laughs> because, mm-hmm. I mean, how much can you, how much is enough for yourself? So, but you have some people that even though, like, I don't, de- I don't deny the fact that they're making money, but they still take out, take out time to try and invest in other people, like try and inspire other people. Bio is somebody that does that too. So, um... The so too like there are a couple of them yeah, that still try and inspire other people, try to be there for other people. It's something sure. that Let's help I feel them like start sh- up. You know? Yeah, they should be appreciated for it. Like I say, thank you to them. Tolan is Tolan is somebody that I think I'll I'll talk about one day, but mm-hmm. it might not be today. But Tolan is is that person as well. Like yeah. people that like stick out their neck for other people. I mean, mm-hmm. like I don't know that talk will be had some other day. <laughs> so that's that that's yeah. the first part. Then the yeah. second phase is. So photographers, especially the upcoming and young ones, mm-hmm. I think um, it's important that you have your perspectives right. Like, I don't mean shooting perspective. I mean life perspective, right? Mm-hmm. Um, even though, yes, there's money in photography, but you can't, you, can't, you can't make money the goal of your life. How will I, how will I explain this now? Um, um, you... For instance, no, like let's say the doctor or the lawyer or the engineer. Yeah. Money can money if as a doctor, money is your goal. You 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 won't do well as a lifesaver because you just look for ways to cut corners just to make money. True. But most doctors, their goal is to save lives. They they have that or connection with oh I just want to save lives. Mm-hmm. Then money money is always a byproduct of whatever you decide to do. Mm-hmm. So if you sort if you if you sort out that part in your in your in your journey early, it will it will help you in a way in a way that you in a way that you never imagined. Like because a lot of the people you you talk about today, even the likes of Andrew, money was never their goal. Like I mean, money caught up with them eventually, and I mean they have this money now. I mean mm-hmm. most of them have money now. But if you start out with just money. Your journey will be limited. You, fine, you might do well. You might become a good photographer. Your name will be heard, but you won't. You won't. You won't get to that place where you should be. You would. Um, I don't know. You. You. Cut you your, blow and drift off. You cut your journey. Yeah. <laughs> so just like I mean, money is important. Everybody needs money, but that should be your goal. Look mm-hmm. for, like look for other connections that that you have with this whole this art, whether it's music you want to do eventually or f- photography. But make sure money is in the goal. Then you are right then you score <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah. thank you i could go on um, ah. yeah i know right i, I hope we made sense though. <laughs> yeah we did i'm sure we did so thank you thank um, you gracias god bless nigeria god bless <laughs> the whole world okay and may god save us from this whole pandemic, pandemic. yeah